to A Bet Face Theatre presents Five Questions With, and today's guest, Kate Hamill. Kate is an award-winning playwright and actor. She has been uh, the one of the top 10 most produced playwrights in the US for three seasons running, from 2017 to 2020, and in 2017 was named Playwright of the Year by the Wall Street Journal. Her critically acclaimed adaptations include Sense and Sensibility, Vanity Fair, Pride and Prejudice, and Dracula. And her work has been seen off Broadway at theaters such as Classic Stage Company, The Pearl and Primary Stages, and at major regional theaters such as the Guthrie, the Folger, and ART. As an actor, besides originating many of the roles in her uh, adaptations, uh, Kate has many theater credits include lauded performances in plays Tally's Folly, The Seagull, and Cyrano. Kate, you're very welcome. Hi, so nice to be here. Great to have you. So Kate, we're gonna just start by asking you um, what play or experience first got you into theater? You know, um, I, I grew up in uh, upstate New York, which is very rural in a very mm -hmm. small um, school district. And the it, so it didn't have much of an arts program and there wasn't, in fact, there really was no arts program. Mm -hmm. And there, um, uh, there wasn't much access to live theater, but um, there was a woman in that school system who taught music all the way from kindergarten to 12th grade, and she sort of ran like a theater camp during the summer. So in fourth grade, I was a very like small, high energy, highly emotional child, and my parents <laughs> decided this might be a good outlet for me. And um, yeah, that was that was the beginning. And and um, yeah, I, I I started getting really, it, it, I kind of was bitten by the bug really young. And um, my father also had a big uh, book of O'Neill plays. Mm. And those were the first plays I ever read because they read very much like novels. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading them for the first time and being like, what is this? <laughs> this life on epic scale. Um, and that got me pretty hooked. I was a little yeah. bit, yeah. When I was Fantastic. And and what was there a point when you kind of knew this was something you wanted to do professionally? Yeah, I think you know I went to school for it um, uh, to undergraduate, and uh, I knew pretty much from when I was a teenager, um, mm -hmm. and I was very determined to get out of this small town and. Um, uh, become an actor. I never thought about, I really didn't think about TV and film at that point. I was just determined to be on stage. Um, mm. There was a regional theater about an hour from me and I used to go see everything. My mm. dad, God bless him, took me to see like Angels in America when I was 11. You know, it was very, <laughs> I was very like determined to be part of this adult, exciting kind of, uh, uh, the kind of like, it felt sort of thrilling and dangerous at that point. Mm -hmm. We're all then, um, yeah, I, I was in a production of The Crucible. I played one of the little girls when I was, you know, um, probably 12. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was around all these adult actors who I thought were just magical and they were vulgar, they would swear, they had like, <laughs> exciting stories. And I was like, yes, it was like, a, you know, and you read in the old books where uh, like someone, some impressionable young kid is around stevedores and wants to be a sailor. I was like, yes, that's, <laughs> that's the life for me. So, uh, yeah, I was pretty young and then, um, I went to school for it and, uh, but I, I playwriting came as sort of a, a surprise mm -hmm. that just happened. <laughs> cool. Very good. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so you talk uh, you talked about the, the great big book of O'Neill plays and how that yeah. was an influence on you. But what's what's a great play that you love and why? Oh God, do you know I love Paula Vogel's How I Learned to Drive. Oh yeah. What an amazing um, play that goes both to these very uh, deep issues in a very personal way and is so. Um, complex and uh i you know i know paula and she's just an amazing uh teacher of playwriting and an amazing force for good in the american theater so it's so nice mm -hmm. when the artist mm -hmm. matches the work because i remember seeing a production of hers when i was quite young and just uh, uh seeing how i learned to drive and just being blown away because it felt 
both so epic and so immediate. And so mm -hmm. I just think that play is perfect, a perfect mm -hmm. play. Yeah. 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 yeah, And so can you tell us about a time in, in your theatrical life, since you've had many theatrical experiences, um, where uh, things didn't turn out how you expected them to? <laughs> Do you know, I feel like that's every theatrical experience. Um, I think one of the great, I, I always think of um, making plays either as a writer or an actor, pretty much anywhere you're involved in the process is like making sand mandalas. Um, mm. They're so amazing. And then they exist for a moment and they're ephemeral. They just blow away in the wind. So I feel like every single time I start writing a script, I sort of have an idea of how it might end up in my head, and it rarely ends up just like that. Um, it, it, that's the nice thing about the theater process is you're collaborative, you are, you're not in control of everything, thank God, you are, <laughs> you are collaborating with other people and you're sort of taking hopefully the best idea all the time and running with it, but you mm -hmm. never know what quite is, what is going to happen. The mm -hmm. audience is always the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, and that unknown changes from night to night. And indeed the chemistry between two actors changes from night to night, how the language resonates changes from night to night. And mm -hmm. so I feel like every single time I step on stage or every single time I'm um, in the audience of one of my plays, I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and I have to say, um, yeah, when I, 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 I guess I have to say, I, I've written plays that I thought, oh, you know, this is going to be like the biggest hit and it just didn't quite hit in the right way. And I've thought written plays and I was like, no one will ever see this and it's going to be terrible and a giant flop. And it was a big hit. So, <laughs> and that's, just the alchemy of things and mm -hmm. you but beyond that it changes so much from night to night I feel like part of what keeps me so engaged in theater is it is it does change all the time and mm -hmm. um zoom theaters and um all the sort of film theater that's happening now because mm -hmm. of the pandemic is so mm -hmm. interesting because on the one hand we get to capture these performances that mm -hmm. And we get so much more accessibility that to people that didn't have it before. And that's so exciting. Um, on the other hand, it's not the same as being in the room together mm -hmm. and having that catharsis and having that live changing chemistry that's so exciting. So it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting balance. Yeah, I feel like every day I'm surprised. And often when people ask, ask me about my writing process, um, I do kind of outline where I think the script will go, but I'm a big believer that the script teaches you, the play teaches you to write itself. So sometimes I'm writing things and I'm like, I don't know where this is going. And so even that's surprising. And I find, I find letting go in that way helpful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. So Kate, so you talked a little bit there about the, the theater process, about the, um, the changeability of it and the liveness of it. And I know, I know you're also uh, working through some more screenwriting now and things like this. So what is it that keeps you coming back to the theater? What moves you, what excites you about theater? Um, I mean, it's, it's so funny because we just went through um, this big existential crisis in the theater. We are still sort of navigating it. So I was asking myself, uh, that a lot. Uh, you know, I have been doing more screen, some more screenwriting than I used to, and um, I do enjoy that as well. But the thing I love about the theater is the theater was created to create community and create catharsis, and mm. it is one of the few public spaces still where you're sitting next to someone and you don't know what their background is you don't know what their politics are you mm. don't know what their views are and you're watching uh an experience and you're all synchronized in that experience mm. together you may have different mm. viewpoints but you know they've done these studies which i'm sure people cite a lot that um audiences watching an actor on stage their their heartbeats actually start to sync with the actors so everyone's having this communal mm -hmm. cathartic experience that they kind that they have to go through together and i feel like 
that's what I'm addicted to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sort of transcendence. Um, sometimes when you're on stage, you kind of feel it. It's like a surfer feels picking up a wave. You can kind mm -hmm. of get there. Um, and uh, or you have this transcendence where you forget yourself. You're just totally mm -hmm. in the character. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm addicted to. And I feel and what I find really moving and um, I'm sort of an incurable idealist. I do feel like, you know, theater teaches me so much empathy and it teaches me so much about how complicated our, um, uh, our motivations and our outcomes are as human beings. When I'm writing a script, um, I have to put myself in every character's shoes. And if I'm feeling a big block about some character, normally I have to be like, you know, I'm judging that person. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, ha I, I feel I have to have empathy for them. I have to understand where they're coming from. Um, mm -hmm. and that I find really moving and really potentially transformational. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the theater, I'm sure, uh, everywhere, but in the U S it certainly has lots of existential issues that are long overdue that it's working through right now, or hopefully working through. And it's, it's easy to sort of be, um, to be cynical about it, but that's what I find so worth fighting for all the time. Mm -hmm. This is sort of my place of religion or my place of spirituality. So, uh, I think you have to fight for what's so good about it and so transformational. Yeah, so beautiful. Nice. Yeah, you were talking there about about empathy, which um, definitely could be a, a, a tool from theater that's like good for the rest of your life. But is there anything else that um, that you have found that you have learned or picked up through theater that you find? good when you're not in the theater <laughs> or helpful when you're outside the theater. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, um, you know, I've spent so much of my life um, in or around the theater that it's a little bit hard to separate. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> um, but I feel like, you know, uh, theater has definitely made me more empathetic, um, made me uh, more able to stand rooted in my views when I really believe mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. um, more articulate for sure. And, um, more curious about my own self and more curious mm -hmm. about other people. Um, it's so easy to sort of take a mental snapshot of someone and feel like you have them figured out. But mm -hmm. if, if nothing else, theater says, listen, everyone thinks they're the hero in their own story <laughs> and everyone has a rich backstory. So <laughs> when you talk to another person, even if you find, if everything about them is the opposite of you, you have to understand they are coming from a place where they're the good guy and you're the other. So yeah. you, you can sort of use that to uh, either communicate with them or argue with them more effectively. I've used both to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it, it is, it is, that is a useful lesson to me. And I also feel like something theater has really helped me do is um, see gradations. I feel like uh, something, certainly in America that we struggle with, is accepting that um, people can be a lot of different things, that, um, that they can both uh, sort of... Uh, do good things and bad things in their life. And in fact, they don't tend to, there are exceptions, there are sociopaths, but there, you know, there are people, most people are neither saints nor sociopaths. Most people are sort of yeah. in the gray, muddy middle. And mm. um, theater has been really helpful for me for that because mm. I mm. think, you know, um, it's, it's really easy for me to judge. <laughs> 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 theater, theater says, you know, like, it, you, you you have more in common with other people mm -hmm. than you think and you are not above anyone <laughs> yeah. and that's been you know the, I think both the humility of that and the empathy of that is always helpful for me yeah fantastic. yeah really beautiful mm -hmm. lovely well this this has been brilliant Kate thank you so much um so just as a <laughs> bonus question um, <laughs> can you tell us anything about what you're working on at the moment 
Sure. Um, I have some screenplays that I can't talk about yet, but um, I have a Zoom play, uh, uh, which is coming out in the fall through Primary Stages, um, directed by Moritz von Stupelnagel, and it's called Badass Gal Boss Power Hour Mandatory Meeting. Uh, it's about <laughs> multi-level. It. It <laughs> it's about multi-level marketing schemes in, uh, and it's set during a Zoom meeting, and it is a, a Zoom play. So, um, mm -hmm. and you can watch that from anywhere in the world. That should come out in September. Um, I'm working on a new play, which is actually about my a sort of funhouse mirror version of my Irish American family in uh, growing up in upstate New York. It's sort of dark um, <laughs> called Mary and Joan. And I'm working on that for Florida Studio Theater. That's in process. Um, and I have two new, oh, three new adaptations that I'm working on. Um, a, a four person uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, and Watts, uh, Watson adaptation, which is set in 2021. It's kind of a stoner comedy. Holmes yeah. and Watson are both stoners, <laughs> living female women living in London. It's based on my time living in London when I was younger. Um, I'm, I'm confessing I was a bit of a stoner. Uh, <laughs> solving crimes. Um, a version of The Odyssey, which I'm working on for ART. And um, a sort of exploration of Upton Sinclair's socialist classic, The Jungle, which I'm uh, will be at the Ojai Playwrights Conference. But the things you can, oh, Portland Center Stage is doing a reading of um, my Holmes and Watson uh, July 25th. And you can watch it anywhere in the world and it's free. So. Oh, excellent. And it's very new. I just wrote it. So I have no idea what's going to happen or how long it will be, but it will be a play. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, okay. Thank you so very much. This has of been course. just wonderful to have you. Thanks oh, thank so you. much. It's been a pleasure, truly. Mm -hmm. Great. And thank you to you, the audience, for joining us. Um, if you enjoyed the interview, please like below and follow about face and share because we believe theater makes life better. So see you next time on About Face Theater presents five questions with. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and share. Thanks for watching.